Hello and welcome to the Wandle IP MPLS View Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning byte, you will be able to explain what Wandle IP MPLS View is and understand its features and capabilities. You'll also be able to navigate the IP MPLS View administrative interface. What is Wandle IP MPLS View? IPM PLS View is software sold by Juniper Networks for you to install on your hardware. It supports Red Hat or the CentOS versions of Linux. And the goal of IPM PLS View is to build a model of your network. And this model is built by importing the output of show commands that are executed on your production network devices. Simple commands, I'm going to use Juniper commands for example, is show configuration, show interfaces, show MPLS, show BGP, show OSPF. The output of those commands are saved to files that can be imported into MPLS, IP MPLS view and build a model of your network. Information about all the nodes, all the links that connect them, the metrics of these links, the tunnels that traverse them, the demands that traverse these tunnels, all of this information is imported into MPLS view and is used to build a complete model of your network. Now the great thing about this model of my network is I know exactly using IP MPLS view how my network is performing today, but on this modeled network I'm allowed to make changes to the model. I'm allowed to add links, add nodes, add metrics, add tunnels, add demands, and see how these changes would affect my production network without actually making them on the production network. There are exhaustive failure simulations available inside of IPM PLS view. What happens when these links or these nodes or multiple links and nodes fail? How are the existing traffic demands rerouted on my network? Are they able to be rerouted? It also supports multiple technologies and vendors. So let's take a look at the IPM PLS view administrative interface. There are two administrative interfaces available for IPM PLS view. There's a Java interface and there's also a web portal available. This is an example of the Java interface and it consists of three main panels and all these panels will contain important information. There is a console panel that displays the results of any network changes or modeling that you're performing. Any changes made inside of MPLS view will appear first in the console panel. There is a topology map that displays the links and the nodes on your network. And there's also a network info panel that displays various tabs that contain information about the links and the nodes and the tunnels on the network. Let's take a look at a live instance of IPM PLS View's administrative interface. Here's an example of the IPM PLS View Java administrative interface. We previously mentioned the console the topology map and the network info panels. I want to start uh, by examining the network info panel in a little more detail so I'm going to expand it to make it a little larger hopefully easier for you to see. And this is a just a general picture about the modeled network. I can see the number of nodes, uh, the number of links and interfaces present in my modeled network. I can see the amount of demands and the bandwidth that's required for my network at this moment and the same type of information about the number of label switch paths, LSP tunnels, and the amount of bandwidth that they require. There's another section that displays the average number of hops a typical demand or a typical label switch path has to traverse to get from point A to point B. So general information here on the summary tab. There's also a nodes tab that contains the learned information about the nodes on my modeled network. Now remember this information was generated on the actual devices and imported into IPM PLS view. So remember information such as show config, show interfaces, show MPLS, show OSPF, show BGP, those properties are imported into MPLS view and so all that information is here and available for us to view and also modify. 
I can double click on a particular node and its properties, more information about it is pulled up. What type of hardware vendor, you know, where is this particular node located, what's the host name, and a lot of additional information is stored and that can actually be modified. So this is information about all my nodes. There's a links tab that contains you know, all of the links that make up my particular network. Here, here's link one, it's present on this particular node. It connects to this particular node. What type of interface is it? What's the metric on these links? What's the utilization percentage of this particular link? And again, this information is imported because of the output of show interfaces command. There's a demands tab that contains information about the traffic flows on your modeled network. Uh, from node A to node B, how much traffic is being produced, what links are carrying that traffic, what the setup and hold priorities for that bandwidth or that traffic demand is, and also information about the label switch pass, the tunnels that are present on the network, the nodes involved in the tunnel establishment, the reserve bandwidth for those particular tunnels, the links the tunnel traverses to get from node A to node B, so all of this information is in the network info panel. I want to focus now on a little bit on the topology map that's present. And again, this is my nodes and, and the links that connect them together. The network info panel and the topology map panel can kind of play together because information that's selected in the network info panel can also be displayed in the topology map. So for example, we're on the tunnels tab currently and I have a label switch path between Boston and Washington DC. Well, if I would like to see this path displayed on the topology map, I can click on the tunnel, right click, and at the very top of the menu that appears, I see show path. And it brings up a dialog box that shows me the current route for this particular label switch path. It leaves Boston on link three, a 10 gig link that goes out to Detroit and, and it leaves link seven on Detroit going over to Chicago and it leaves link eight on Chicago and it terminates on Washington DC. So I can see that information in the dialog box that appears, but I can also see it by simply following the arrows. From Boston, it went to Detroit, and you can see the Chicago and on down to Washington, D.C. So by right-clicking on areas in the network info portion of the interface, I can cause information to be uh, placed into the topology map. I can right-click and say, highlight all, and it will show me all the label switch paths that are configured across the network. I can do the same thing with demands and links. I can select a particular demand and show the path, but there's a lot of additional information I can see. Hey, for this particular flow, what's the end-to-end -end delay? And it brings up a graph where I can see, you know, here's the in milliseconds, it looks like somewhere around 24, you know, milliseconds in delay for this particular flow to get from Chicago to, to Los Angeles. So all kinds of information is stored in this model and I can view it using the IPM PLS view interface. I can even modify the map. I can move the map around in the topology map window. I can also relocate the position of nodes and, and right click on nodes. For example, see config files, you know, delete nodes. I can add nodes, modify nodes. I can assign labels. I see the host names for all these nodes because in the labels option for the nodes, one of the things that can be displayed about the nodes is their host name, their IP address, their site, and so forth. I can do the same information for my links. I can right click in the topology map window and labels and assign link labels. So I can display the link utilization, I can display the interface name, the IP address, the metric, the delay, the bandwidth. So let's just do utilization. If I say OK, I can see the bandwidth utilization percentage displayed for each bidirectional link on the network. I can also view that information to determine link utilization using the color graph on the left hand side. I can see based on the colors that have been associated with these links, the average amount of bandwidth utilization currently on those links. So this is just an example of a little bit of the information that can be displayed, but please explore your instance of IPM PLS view. Select objects of information in the network info panel, right click on them. Do the same thing with the nodes and the links in your network to learn all the information that's been imported 
about your model. In this learning bite, we explain what Wandel IP MPLS View is and some of its features and capabilities. We also navigated the IP MPLS View administrative interface. For more information about Juniper Network's training and certification options, please visit our website. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Network's certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.